<clears throat> we can start with a short mindful breathing exercise. Watching the breath mindfully for a few moments to quiet our mind, to bring our mind in moment present. Then we can try to generate good intention, motivation for being here. For example, we can think, may us coming together, giving our precious time to listen and to engage in discussions, reflecting, contemplating. May all of this become cause and conditions to remind us to encourage us, to inspire us to be more mindful all the time. through the mindfulness and our witness so that we can have more deeper understanding and awareness of nature of our body. The nature of our feelings, mind and phenomena. and through more profound depth understanding and awareness of the nature of all those objects. So we can reduce strong attachment, aversions, or anger and ignorance that arises due to not understanding 
or not being aware of the nature of those objects. So may it become cause and condition and reduce and destroy all those afflictive emotions or defilements that arises due to the misconceptions of the nature of those phenomena or objects. It may become common conditions to actualize all the spiritual realizations within our mind state, mental state, mind stream, the path, and to achieve our highest potential, the fully awakened state. So we can be greatest help and benefit, not only help, but the greatest help and benefit to not only others, but all sentient beings, including oneself. <clears throat> so we just um, last week we just kind of um, discuss a little bit on what are the, those four um, steps of the mindfulness those four objects of the mindfulness, you know, um, which are, you know, the mindfulness of body, the mindfulness of the feelings, the mindfulness of the mind, and the mindfulness of phenomena. And we also discuss um, What does the mindfulness mean? You know, what is the that particular state of mind? And um, there are two different versions, and we discuss that. And then, uh, in relation to the the first, uh, the practice of mindfulness of the body. So we kind of um, talk a bit on that. And there are many different practices in relation to that. We kind of. We didn't go in much details in each of them, but we did kind of touch on many different practices, um, different mindfulness practice meditations that is related with the, the mindfulness of the body. And um, mm. and through that mindfulness of the body you know, as we mentioned last time, is to overcome through mindfulness and meditation to come to understand and to be, a, uh, to have a depth or profound understanding and awareness to that practice of mindfulness so that we, um, Having overcome that, um, through that, then overcoming the misconceptions of um, perceiving the body of oneself and others to be, you know, um, 
pure or attractive that give rise to the attachment desire, you know. And through that deep, profound understanding and awareness, then we come to understanding that the, the body is, is not as not attractive as it appeared to us, it's not as pure as it uh, appeared to us. And when you have that understanding, then uh, there's no more um, strong desire or attachments by um, that arises due to perceiving the body to be uh, attractive and uh, you know uh, pleasant or attractive, pleasant or pure, you know. And so that was one of the one of, one of the um, things that it helped. And of course, many other um, many others um, positive effect of that practice, you know. Um, but that is one of the main um, to overcome that misperceptions and the attachment that arises from that misperceptions. So that was one. Um, and so second, um, today we, you know, I start with the, the, the mindfulness of the feelings, you know. When we talk about feelings, you know, um, generally speaking, you know, there are three kinds of feelings, you know, pleasant feeling, joyful or pleasant feeling, you know, unpleasant or painful feelings, you know, and then neutral feelings. That is neither pleasant or unpleasant, neither joyful or painful feelings, you know. And um, and due to those those different feelings that arises, you know. then different emotions arises for those sentient beings, you know, who have not overcome the delusions, you know. And so when we have pleasant feelings, then, you know, it gives rise to attachment or craving, you know, attachment or craving for that pleasant feeling, that joyful feeling. On the other hand, when we have an unpleasant, painful feeling, then it gives rise to aversions, you know, that it gives rise to the emotions of aversions, you know, dislike, aversions. Um, mm. And then, on the other hand, when we have neutral feelings, you know, then it gives a rise to the ignorance. You know, so due to those three different kinds of feeling, then it gives a rise to three poisonous, you know, state of mind or delusions, you know. And due to those three different negative emotions or delusions, then we, we, we experience a lot of suffering and pain and create, you know, negative karma, contaminated karma that give rise to more suffering and pain in the future. You know. So, the mindfulness, so um, um, in one of the sutras and the, asked by the, the Arya Tsukna, fresh Tsukna or Tsukna Rinpoche, you know, yeah, when Buddha explains, you know, um, one should not be attached uh, to the, the feeling of joyfulness, 
you know, one should completely destroy their attachments. You know, one should not have aversions or anger towards painful feelings, you know, and one should, you know, completely destroy that kind of aversion or anger. Um, one should not cultivate ignorance towards the neutral feelings, you know, and one should completely um, destroy the, um, that ignorance. Mm. And then, you know, whatever, um, one ex whatever feeling one experiences, uh, one should try to see them in the nature of impermanent, see all those feelings in the nature of impermanent, you know, and experience and have that awareness. Mm. Mm. And one should also understand all this contaminated feeling as a nature of sufferings. Mm. See them as a nature of suffering and have awareness of that. Mm. One should also see all those feelings in the nature of setlessness, you know, emptiness, and have that awareness. Mm. Whatever pleasant feeling, one should see as an impermanent. Whatever unpleasant feeling, one should see it as a painful or sufferings. Whatever neutral feelings, one should see as, uh, you know, peace, peaceful. And so, um, therefore, whatever is pleasant feeling is impermanent. Whatever is an unpleasant feeling is a nature of suffering. Whatever is a neutral feeling is a nature of emptiness, of selflessness. So that is, um, so here, you know, that Buddha explained how to practice the, the mindfulness of the feelings. So basically, you know, um, whenever any kind of feeling arises, you know, <clears throat> any of those three kinds of different feelings, whatever it arises in our mind, <clears throat> due to whatever conditions, due to whatever cause, you know, simply just being mindful, watchful and aware of that, you know, Again, as we mentioned before, you know, without being, you know, uh, too occupied with those feelings, without giving the fuel to that feelings, you know, um, but instead, you know, simply just learning to be mindful, watchful, aware, you know, and then just trying to understand, you know, again, when we have pleasant feeling, how do you feel? What does it does? How do you feel when you have that pleasant feelings? Does it give rise to any kind of strong desire, craving? You know, when you have that present feeling, you know, does it kind of well, uh, you, you have this feeling, you know, not wanting to let it go, you know, wanting to hold on that, wanting to experience that all the time with continuity or not? So just, just observing, simply just observing with that kind of, you know,
how does that when you have that pleasant joyful feeling how does you feel how does it give rise to others state of mind and physically how do you feel about it what are the physical you know effect of that strong feelings emotions you know does you know does your body feel relaxed or does your body feel more uptight you know less relaxed you know same when you have that feelings you know does it make your mind more peaceful or less peaceful so just simple is just being observing mindfully observing what is doing when you have that feeling in term of on physical level in term of emotional mental level you know and being aware of that and we do that same uh, you know with the um, with others uh, practice or this when you have also unpleasant painful feeling that's what we do and when you have neutral feeling that's also what we try to do you know um so with that then we begin to understand you know how those different feeling give rise to those different negative emotions at the moment you know we don't have deep understanding of that you know even though buddha said that even though he explained in that sutras and others but you know from we don't have that deep understanding with our own experience but through that practice if you continue to observe watch mindfully and with that kind of thing slowly slowly we begin to have more deep understanding deeper and deeper understanding and yes indeed it's not just what buddha said but it in it, it, with your own experience with your own experience you kind of affirm um, that that was the true at the moment sometimes we feel oh buddha said that but i'm not so sure you know sometimes we feel oh that is true but sometimes we think i'm not sure we still have kind of two minded sometimes not 100% convinced but through that practice with the time then we begin to have more and deeper understanding with your own experience your own observations and then your then our we have you know with our two minded total convictions you know as it is mentioned you know and so hmm? and then you know not only that then also we try to um, try to observe you know um of course you know we understand the suffering as a suffering the suffering the painful painful feeling as being a suffering i think we all kind of more or less understand that you know that painful feeling is not something um, happiness but it is a suffering and we all try to avoid that we all try to avoid that painful feelings in whatever way we can because we understand it is something undesirable unpleasant painful or suffering but at the moment we don't feel that same to our joyful feelings in you know? joyful feeling we don't feel like that you know we want to avoid that joyful feeling that we you know we don't feel like is undesirable 
we don't feel like that we need to uh, get out of there but we are instead we are kind of attached to it we are have, you know we we have craving and grasping to it so again whenever we have that kind of pleasant joyful feelings observing mindfully observing you know how does that feeling you know end up if you just watch it you know those pleasant joyful feeling with the time that feeling sometime you know kind of transform into something unpleasant feeling you know one moment it was pleasant feeling the next moment or after a few moments that same feeling is no more there sometimes that feeling transform into some kind of bitterness sometimes transform into some kind of disappointment and that kind of bitter that bitter feeling and that disappointing feeling is not a pleasant a joyful is unpleasant so we see that that kind of contaminated pleasant feeling you know transform you know with the time sometimes it transform into bitterness sometimes it uh, transform into a um, you know disappointing feelings and sometimes it doesn't transform in the dad immediately you know that feeling does not last it could last for one second one moment a little bit maybe a few minutes but then it does not last you know it does not last and when we when that feeling that we had before when it is gone there is something missing craving for that wanting that do you get it that lead to some kind of missing something something you want that you lost something you want to hold on that now is gone something that you want and that feeling of missing that you had something before and now you don't have so you started to miss about missing about it uh, you know you wish you could have you know you wish you didn't lose it you could you, you wish that you could repeat it re-experience it recreate it and not being able to do that is miserable unhappy state and so again you know that feeling does not give you lasting joyful feeling but instead it lead to that kind of you know unpleasant miserable feelings you know unhappy feelings and that is same with the feeling of neutral you know the neutral feelings you know if you watch it if you observe it you know again you know that neutral feeling doesn't remain neutral all the time again after some time that neutral feeling can transform into frustrations anger bitterness disappointing or different those different unpleasant painful feelings emotions you know give rise to that you know and no that neutral 
feeling doesn't remain as a neutral feeling forever, you know. After some time, that that give to rise to uh, those unpleasant feelings. So you know, so through that observations, you know, mindfully observing, watching. We are not trying to trying to see something which is not there. You know, trying to put something quality in there, but we just try to see how those mind, those different feelings. If you really observe that with a um, with a mindful depth, then we begin to see, you know, those all those kind of all those three different contaminated feelings, whatever they are, you know, they all lead to at the end, they all lead to kind of you know unhappy, unpleasant, painful feeling all lead to suffering, suffering feelings, you know. Through that, then we begin to understand, oh, as long as it's contaminated feeling, no matter what they are, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, they all lead to sufferings. They all lead to disappointment, sense of, you know, unhappy, unple uh, unhappy, you know, um, miserable state of mind. You know. Through that, then we begin to have more depth, understanding, the awareness. You know, the contaminated feeling are uh, in the nature of suffering. Not because the Buddha said, but now with our own practice our own observations, our own mindful practice. Now we have begin to have that understanding and deep understanding, not, a, not just intellectual understanding, but experiential deep, deep understanding of that. And once we have that deep understanding or realization, experiential realization, awareness, then you know not only not will not be attached to the you know not only will not be attached to the unpleasant painful feeling and neutral feeling but will also not be attached to those joyful feeling as well As long as it's contaminated feeling, even the joyful feelings, you know, in understanding they are also in the nature of suffering. So you, you are not so attached to it. And if we are not attached to that, you know, those feelings, then, you know, you suffer less. You, know, you don't suffer so much because you, know, you are not attached to it. Yeah. Hmm. So, um, and also, you know, um, yeah, of course, whether it's the body, whether it's the feeling, we we'll also try to see, you know, the impermanent nature of the body and the feelings. How, whether it's the body, if you kind of observe and watch, the breath, each moment of the breath is not same. Is he inhaling, is exhaling is different, not same. You know, every breath we take is not same. Is each breath is momentary. You know, momentary. Not only that, then you know, each you know, um, is part of the body that is made out of you know, the four element. Each moment of four element is momentary. You know, water element of 
in our body, which is made of water element, earth element, fire element, um, the wind element. Each of those elements are also more materials. You know, each of those elementaries are momentaries, you know. They all are momentaries. And because those are momentary, the body is also momentary. Its moment is changing. Even from like, as, as it says, you know, like every moment, there's new, as science says, you know, each moment new cells are being created and the other cells are dying each moment, you know, there is constant that of that. Similarly, that is how in body. And we are made out of that, those cells. So in that sense, you know, body is also changing momentarily, moment by moment. Moment by moment, the body is changing moment by moment. Sometimes it might not be so obvious to our naked eyes, but that is happening. You know, when that change becomes more gross, then it, become, it became obvious to our naked mind, our naked eyes, but actually that subtle momentary change is always happening. And so understanding that, you know, um, of that nature of that. And again, uh, through that, um, same with the um, same with the feelings, you know. Even though sometimes we feel like we had same feeling, you know, for one hour, you know, whether it's pleasant or unpleasant feelings or neutral feeling, it feel like we have been having we have been experiencing that feeling for one hour or maybe one day. Or one week, we feel like, oh, I had this wonderful feeling for one week. It lasted one week. All bad feelings. But if you really watch and observe, you know, deeply, it's not the same. It's not the same feelings. It's just the continuity of that feelings, and each continuity is different. But because it's kind of continuity, it feels like it's the same. But actually, it's a different in each moment. You know? So it's just one moment give rise to the next moment. Next moment give rise to the next moment. And next moment give rise to the next moment. So therefore, to us, it feels like it's the same, but actually, it's a different. The first moment is cease, but it gives rise to the second moment. And second moment cease that, that better moment, but it gives rise to the third moment. And then it continues moment by moment in that way. It's to us, it feels like at the moment, it feels like it's the same feelings, but actually it's not the same feelings. And that if we observe, if we observe through mindfulness, we will be able to. Um, you know, um, recognize that and have that awareness, you know. Because someone who has very strong mindfulness, awareness, and a practice, you know, they will be able to stop, you know, giving rise to a second moment, you know. One moment arises, and then through their practice, they don't kind of give fuel to that moment that give rise to the second moment. You know, they just learn, they just observe. One moment arises, and then that moment ceases, and there's no continuity of that. So therefore, you know, whatever, it, whether it's an unpleasant feeling or pleasant feeling, if you arises momentarily one moment and then through that practice you know they learn not to entertain that thoughts that feeling and when you learn not to entertain them then it doesn't give fuel to that feeling 
to give rise to the second moment, third moment, and continuity of that. And through your practice, when someone through your practice, when you are able to do that, then you recognize, oh, these are just a momentary. Even though you felt it was, you know, lasted the same feeling for a long time, but it is not, you know. Um, so through that um, practice and meditations, again, uh, uh, you know, one learn um, to um, understand the impermanent nature of the body and the mind. You know, how it is the body, whether it's the mind and the feeling, you know, how it is arising and ceasing or decaying moment by moment. How each of them moment by moment is arising, moment by moment it ceases and decay. You know. And so understanding the are the nature of the those body and the mind is impermanent, you know. Mm. Down slowly, momentarily. And when you have that understanding, again, you know, you have less strong attachments, less strong attachments, or less strong aversions. You know, if it's a bad feeling, you have a, if it's an unpleasant feeling, painful feeling, you have a <clears throat> less strong aversion. If it's a pleasant feeling, you have a less strong attachment. Uh, if it is a neutral feeling, you have a less strong um, ignorance. And, you know, when you understand uh, the nature of all that, those object being temporary, you know, down story, momentary, um, impermanence. You know, so, <clears throat> So that is a little bit on the practice of the mindfulness of the feelings, okay? And especially uh, the mindfulness of feeling as, um, as um, I mentioned at the very beginning is um, to understand, to have a deeper understanding and awareness that all these contaminated um, feeling are in the nature of sufferings. That is the man, you know. Mm -hmm. Then the third one, you know, um, the meditation of mindfulness of the mind. Um, so, again, you know, When you ever we have any kind of you know mind consciousness arising, you know manifesting, you know, again mindfully observing, watching it, you know, um, and trying to see, you know, as I mentioned with the feeling and body, you know, how each of whatever that mind it is, whether it's a virtuous mind, whether it is a non-virtuous mind. You know, whether it's a delusions, whether it's a realizations, whether it's a conceptual thought, or whether it's a non-conceptual perceptions, direct perceptions, such as uh, eye sense consciousness and so forth. If you observe, as mentioned before, all of those consciousness or the mind, you know, is changing momentarily, moment by moment, as mentioned before, as we discussed with the feeling and um, the body, the nature of that mind is impermanent, changing moment by moment. 
it does not remain same forever. You know? It's there for, for a moment and then it's gone. You know? It's there for a moment and then it's no more there. No. And as I mentioned, sometimes it feels like the, that particular mind has been there for long, but I, as I mentioned, it's just only the continuity, it's not, not the same mind. You know, the first, the second moment of the mind is not the first moment, not the same as the first moment of the mind. The first moment of mind is not the same as the second moment of mind, even though it's continuity of that first moment giving rise to the second moment, second moment giving rise to the third moment, third moment giving rise to the fourth and so forth. But each of those mind, moment mind is a moment, it, 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 uh, um, it arises and it cease, but then that give rise to the second moment that arises and that cease, but then it give rise to the third one, that moment that again arise and cease in that moment, but it give fall. And so it's, it's like that, but actually it's not the same. And so, so momentarily is arising and ceasing, arising, ceasing, arising, ceasing. So they all are, they, don't, they do not last forever even for two seconds. You know, one moment it arises, in that late moment cease. The next moment arises, it is cease. Next moment arises, cease. You know, so that is, so the nature of the mind being, you know, impermanent, down story moment it is. Hmm? And also trying to observe, you know, Mm. the nature of the mind, how the nature of the mind is something that you cannot show, that does not have shape, color, and size. If you observe what is the nature of that mind, whatever that mind is, whether it's a perception or whether it's a conception of thought, whether it's a virtuous thought, non-virtuous thought, you know, whether there's a delusion or there is a Realizations, if you look at that, you know, that particular mind, you know, consciousness do not have shape, color, size like that. We have like the, in the nature of the physical world, physical matters, you know, in physical matter, they shape, color, size, and so forth. So, in a way is kind of invisible, you know, that. And if you look deeply in the nature of the mind, you know, the nature of mind is that something you cannot hold on, you know, like a physical matter, you know. Unlike a physical matter, it can, it does not abstract, uh, um, abstract, you know, in physical matter, one that physical matter abstract the other physical matter. But unlike like that, it, it has no abstraction in that way, as it is in physical matter, you know. Mm. And if you look, you know, the nature of the mind is mere, you know, Aware, awareness, or you know, mm. in the nature of something that has the awareness or the nature of knowing the object, you know, whether it is knowing correctly or incorrectly. Um, or 
perceiving what is uh, correctly or in, incorrectly, you know. And then the nature of the mind, you know, being uh, clear, you know, in that sense, clear, you know, luminous. And in terms of the continuity, you know, then it is like never ending. You know, unlike like physical matters, you know, they can end. But in the mind, in terms of the continuity, in terms of the one moment giving rise to the next moment and next moment like that, in terms of that continuity, it comes from the beginning's lifetime and it goes endlessly. Mm. So even though its nature is impermanent from the continuity point of view, then it's almost like permanent, you know, from the continuity point of view, you know, that it has continued from the beginning's life, beginningless time, and it will continue endlessly, you know. Um, so that is, if you will truly try to observe mindfully the nature of the mind, that's how, what is the nature of the mind, you know. So again, um, observing that, observing mindfully and having a more depth and profound understanding or awareness of that the nature of the mind, you know. Conventional nature of the mind, that is understanding the conventional nature of the mind. And if we have understand that conventional nature of the mind, you know, then that realization, that understanding can help in many other practice, you know. Um, when you have that deep understanding, it can help, you know, the possibility of the, the why, you know, the mind continue, you know, unlike like a physical matter, how the mind continue even after the death. And, you know, and so, and many other um, subjects, it can be helpful uh, in many other meditation, many other subjects when we have that deeper understanding of that conventional nature of that, um, the conventional nature of the mind. So basically, you know, kind of really looking, uh, watching and observing uh, mindfully the nature of the mind in that way. It's my nature of the mind in that way. Mm. So in the one of the sutras, you know, uh, a sutra that asked by the, you know, Kashapa, you know, the Maha Kashapa, one of the men, uh, one of the, the Buddha's disciple. Where Buddha says, Kashapa, the mind is like a like a waterfall, the continuity of the waterfall. You know, it does not up, remain. You know, it it arises and it ceases. You know, and he continue again. Kashapa, the mind is like a wind. You know. It goes far away, you know, but cannot be hoped. Kashava, mind is like a, uh, the light of the, uh, you know, um, candle or water lamp, you know, hmm? that depend on cause and conditions. Hmm? So it is uh, in that, so it says, so that is through that kind of observing, you begin to understand, you know, how the mind, and through that, again, observing, where does that mind come from? What is the cause and condition that give rise to that particular mind? 
you know, those different mind. So again, understanding why I have this particular mind, you know, what is the cause and condition that give rise to this particular mind? At the moment, we have different mind, different emotion, different thought arises. And sometimes we are not aware, aware why we are feeling that way, why we're having that. Do you get it? Sometimes we might feel fearful of something, but we don't know why or what we are fearful. Sometimes we might not feel so great today, but you, sometimes we don't know why you are not feeling so great. All these different feelings, different thoughts, different emotions, different mind arises. And a lot of time we are not aware what gives rise to that mind. And it, because if we know what gives rise to that mind, it will, we will find a better solution to, solve, to overcome that particular emotion in the mind by going to the very cause and condition that give rise to that mind, you know? For example, if I, I'm fearful of something and if I'm aware where the fear come from, where the fear come from, the root of that fear and if you walk with that root of your fear, then your fear can be overcome. But if we don't know where the fear comes from, and if we cannot find the root of that fear, then we will not be able to deal with that root of the fear. So the fear will always remain there. You know, and so therefore, understanding the cause and conditions of each of those different state of mind really can be great helpful to reduce and overcome some of those, you know, unpleasant negative feelings, thoughts, emotions, you know. Um, to understand why we have those negative thoughts, negative feelings, emotions, what give rise to them, you know, and what, what give rise to those positive feelings, emotion, thought, you know, joyful feelings and so forth. What are the cause and conditions? Because if we understand that more deeply, then we will stop creating cause and condition that give rise to those painful feelings, emotions or negative thoughts, mind. And if we understand deeply what are the cause condition for that pleasant feelings or you know positive emotions, mind, then we will engage more into the cause and condition that give you rise. Of course we have a kind of at the moment we do have some understanding, but it's very shallow. Our understanding is very shallow, very artificial in a way. You know. Um, And that is why even with that understanding, we cannot really make much change in our actions, behaviors, our attitude, because our understanding at the moment is kind of not deep enough, not profound enough. And but when you when we do that kind of practice and meditation, when you really you know, understand from the depth of your mind because you are really observed enough, because you have watched and observed enough through that mindfulness. Then you come to a really deeper understanding and awareness. And when you have that deeper, profound understanding and awareness, then, you know, there definitely there will be a transformation in our attitude and in our actions and behavior, you know on physical level, on verbal level, on mental level. So, also observing, mindfully watching and observing, you know, how does each of those emotions, you know, um, lead to particular result, you know, not only observing the cause and conditions, also observing 
and watching the result of that particular mind, you know. Certain particular mind, you know, give rise to a pleasant, uh, give rise to a positive, positive result in terms of that give rise to, you know, some positive thoughts, some positive feelings, some positive emotion. On the other hand, some of those minds give rise to more delusional thoughts, more delusional um, emotions, feelings, you know. Some of those minds give rise to, you know, happiness, joyful feelings. Some of those give rise to uh, unpleasant, painful feelings, you know. And so again, observing what is the result of that particular emotions on, on mental level, on emotional level, as well as on physical level, you know. How does that particular mind affect us physically? Because different mind affect us not only emotionally and mentally, it also affect us on physical level differently. You know? And then we begin to have really better understanding of those different state of mind, you know, what the result of those individual particular mind, you know, does it affect, does the effect of that mind is something positive, good, or is that effect of that particular mind is unpleasant, negative, you know, just on both emotional, physical, emotional, mental level and physical level, you know. So trying to understand that, just being watching, you know. And isn't, isn't that the case, you know, like even in a science, you know, even in the science, a lot of those discovery and that through those discoveries that have solved a lot of the problems is just observing them, you know. Sometimes people observing, sometimes they have machine camera observing there over the time, all the time, and they see small, you know. And so is that observations that being able to observe help us to understand the nature of that phenomenon better. Here, the mind. Unfortunately, our mind cannot be observed by the, that machines, you know. So we have to do with our mind. We have to use the, uh, you know, telescope of our mind, you know. Who knows, maybe in the future, maybe, maybe they might develop a telescope that can observe our mind. Mm. That can be nice. We don't have to work so hard. Until we have that tools, the only tool we have is our own mind. And that is the, the, the practice of mindfulness is that tool, you know. Of course, sometimes it's not easy to be able to observe. You need a lot of patience. Forget about the mind, you know, even if you are watching a leaf outside or a flowers or water running. If you have to be there watching just that one for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you will get so bored. You will not be able to focus, you know. That is how our mind is at the moment, you know. Our mind is so busy all the time. We cannot stop not thinking, not doing something, simply just being there, observing and watching. You know, I have tried, you know, like watching a flowers, you know, without any judgmental thought, without any thought, 
oh, it was not easy, even for a few moments, you know. Already you say, oh, it's nice. Oh, it's big. Oh, it's small. Oh, it's that color. Oh, it's that shape. Oh, it's not moving. You know, without any kind of those thought, simply just being there, watching there. Try that exercise and we will see, you know. Uh, um, and so definitely not only external world watching with that eyes with, without any kind of those different thoughts, simply just being there in the moment, watching and doing nothing, just being observing, mindful and watching. And that is also what we try to do with, um, you know, here in the third object of mindfulness, the mind, you know, uh, Okay, maybe um, in, in, in the same sutras, um, that path for the kashapa uh, in terms of the you know, mind, in terms of the especially negative mind, here Buddha says, no, um, mind is the cause of the, all the suffering, therefore is like a, you know, enemy, you know. And again, Kashaba, he says, um, mind is the one that destroys all the virtues. Therefore, it is like the, you know, the same house. Kashaba, the mind is, you know, um, that perceive uh, to something to be permanent when it, even though it's impermanent, it perceived to be permanent. And therefore, it is like the do, do. In the kashaba, the mind is um, mind perceive, you know, the suffering to be a, a happiness, and therefore it is like the, the fish hook. Um, and kashaba, the mind is like something, even though is mind is something that perceive to be you know, self-existing self when it is a selfless. And therefore it's like a dream. And Kashaba, the mind perceive something which is un pure to uh, perceive as a pure. Therefore it is like the uh, blue bee. So I don't know exactly that example of the blue bee. Um, I guess, I don't know, this particular bee might be confused with some flowers that doesn't have uh, what I call the sweet and maybe they perceive it as sweet or something, um, something that, that mistake, you know, um, so, but that is that is example giving that. Mm. And so there are some examples. So in, in those examples are, a, I think mainly example of the, you know, the, the mistaken delusion of mind. And basically it's true observation, mindfulness, understanding how those delusional, you know, effective minds, uh, you know, lead us to misconception and how that misconception give rise uh, to the sufferings, you know. So basically, again, observing the result of those different minds. Mm. And through that understanding how they are deceptions and how they are the root of the sufferings. And then um, the fourth is the mindfulness of the phenomena. 
So here, the phenomena mainly refer to the, you know, um, the mental factors, uh, you know, the mental factors, um, which are uh, not the feelings, you know, to do one mental factors, you know, of course they are slightly different, often different um, sources, but in general, you know, um, there's few to one mental factors. And from those mental factors, we already kind of discuss about the feelings, you know, and so the rest of the mental factors are included here, the object of meditation here. And especially from the, among those mental factors, you know, then, um, is a mm, there are certain positive or virtuous mental factors, and there are some negative and non virtuous mental factors. And then again, seeing you know those positive mental factors, you know, um, positive qualities, and those negative mental factors, negative qualities, or at the fourth of that. And so, again, is meditating. So, basically, you know when you have a positive mental factors, you know, such as loving kindness, compassion, you know, strong faith and so forth, you know, again, observing when you have that feelings, that emotions arising, that mental factors arising. It can be loving kindness, it can be compassion, it can be a, a strong faith in the, you know, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha and so forth, you know. So again, observing, you know, each of those mental factors, you know. What is the cause of that mental factors as mentioned? Cause and condition that give rise to that mental factors. What is the nature of that mental factors? What are the result of that mental factors in terms of um, what does that mental factor give rise to, you know, does it, does it give a sense of peaceful, does it give a peaceful feeling or does it give a disturbing feelings on mental level, on emotional level? And how does physically you feel when you have that loving kindness, compassion, and fit mental factors. How do you feel in physically? You know, what is, what is the physical effect? What is the physical effect of that mental factors? What is the emotional mental factor of that? You know? So here we are not trying to say, oh, the men, this and that, but just simply just observing, learning to observe mindfully to understand what are the effect of that, those mental factors. If you observe, then you will, one will be able to understand, you know, the positive qualities or effect of those mental factors, you know. And when you understand that, the positive, positive quality or effect of those mental factors, then of course, you know, naturally will be you know, drawn to develop those mental factors. You know, we will be naturally drawn to actualize those mental factors, to, to maintain those mental factors, to increase and improve those mental factors. You know, it's like that give boost. It gives you energy and boost to cultivate, to maintain and to increase those positive mental factors not because Buddha said that's good, not because your teacher said it's good, not because you saw in the scripture it's good, but because you found with your own experience and your own observations, you know, now you have totally convinced without too minded how those are constructive, how those are helpful and beneficial with your own experience. So therefore, you know, it, it gives you a lot of boost energies you know, to, to cultivate, to, to keep them, 
to improve them. Mm. So understanding. Uh, then in terms of negative, you know, non-virtuous mental factors, you know, such as strong attachments, attachments, anger, and um, ignorance and whatever other negative emotions, or there's frustration, or there's impatience, you know, where there's anxieties, you know, whatever that different emotions we have. Again, just learning to watch them, observe them mindfully, you know. What's the nature of those individual no, non virtues, mental factors, how each of them, what are, you know, what are the effect of each of those mind, mental factors in terms of on emotional level, mental levels, you know, on physical levels, how does it affect us physically when we have those emotions, when you have frustration, how does you the body feel it. Does it feel relaxed or does it feel more tight, you know, unrelaxed? You know, when you have too much fear, anxiety, and so forth, how does it feel? You know, does it feel good or does it feel bad on a physical level? You know, do you feel the stress? You know, the, um, pain on the backside and so forth, you know. Um, and so with, with each of them, you know, and again, trying to understand on deeper level, the profound level, the effect of those different mental factors, those negative non virtuous mental factors. And also trying to observe, watch mindfully the nature of each of those mental factors and the cause and condition that give rise to those different mental factors. Hmm? And when we understand that better with that deeper profound level to the, our own experience and observation, then again, you know, it will give you a lot of energies to you to not to have those negative, those non-virtuous mental factors, not to, not to cultivate and not to hold on those uh, negative non-virtuous uh, mental factors. And by understanding the cause and condition that give to rise, then we can stop creating those cause and conditions. And so that we don't have those negative mental factors. And by not having those mental factors, then we don't have the negative impact of those mental factors on emotional mental level as a physical level. You know? And so again, sense of wanting to reduce and overcome those negative mental factors come from the depth of your heart because you really saw it with your own experience observation. You really saw it, how harmful they are, you know, how negative impact it has on you on many different levels, you know. not just based on because my teacher say and I believe my teacher or I trust in my teachers. Not because the Buddha said and I trust the Buddha. Not because the Narajuna and all those great masters say and because I trust them. But with your own personal observation and experience, you understood that. And then that when you have that, the, the drive come from within, from the dead. You know, 
at the moment, it feels like we have to be, you know, pushed by someone else all the time. Because the drive, there's no drive from the bad debt, you know, from outside. Our teacher has to remind us, our teacher has to give us practice, do this, that, all of that, you know. Um, and so when we have that, then, you know, really it comes from your, the drive to uh, overcome them and not to hold on them and uh, to, to overcome the, the cause of cause and condition that will naturally come from your death from your heart, and there is a lot of driving force to do that. Um, and of course, then also, you know, trying to um, see uh, the nature of all this, whether it's positive or negative um, mental factors, uh, the nature of them, each of them is nature of them is impermanent, like previously, the mind, feeling, the body, all of them are, you know, in the nature of impermanent, you know, changing moment by moment, you know, does not last forever, you know, does not last. You know, and also seeing, you know, how they don't have a nature of existing by themselves. When you observe all of those different, um, whether it's the body, whether it's the feeling, whether it's the mind, whether it's those mental factors, none of them can exist by itself. They all can exist by depending on other cause, condition, and factors. Through your own observation, you see how each of them cannot exist by itself without depending on other factors. If you observe it, if you take all, all the factors, can that emotions, that mental factors exist as that mental factors? If you take all the other factors, cause and condition that give rise to that, that mental factors, whether it's positive or there's a negative mental factors. Same with the consciousness, same with the feelings. And through that observations, then you begin to understand none of those exist, none of all, um, four objects cannot exist by itself. And therefore, when you understand on deep and profound over that, through that observation, they cannot exist by itself without depending on other factors, cause, condition, and so forth. Then you begin to understand, you know, how those objects do not exist inherently or truly, and how they are empty of truly existing, how they are empty of inherent existence. Hmm? So, so that is the, the phenomena, you know, meditating on um, the emptiness of separateness of that. And so through those meditations, then as I mentioned before, yesterday, then it helped to overcome those four misconceptions, uh, you know, the misconceptions of the body to, even though it is impure, or, you know, the nature that we grasp mistakenly perceive to be pure and then get attached to it by seeing the contaminated feeling, even though in a nature of suffering, by seeing it's a nature of happiness, then we again we misconceive and get attacked. By seeing the consciousness, even though they are in the nature of impermanent, we see them as a permanent, and therefore, well, again, we get attached to that. And even the nature of all the phenomena are non-truly existing, and non inherent existence, when we perceive, misperceive to be in hidden existence, truly existing on the basis of that, then you know, attachment, aversions, or anger arises, and through that, other negative emotions arises, and then that lead to painful and suffering state. And so, so yeah, that is all about the 
for establishment of the mindfulness, okay? So if there's any questions, I can take one or two. If there is. Lynn, do you have a question? I do. I, first of all, thank heavens that nothing lasts, even the good stuff. Thank heavens for impermanence. But <clears throat> is it possible to develop positive mental factors without grasping first? You know, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's sort of like. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I cannot say to my experience, but theoretically, yes, it is possible. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but so theoretically, we should be able to develop all those mental factors without grasping, to enter the path without the grasping, to achieve the enlightenment without grasping, you know, because as long as there's a grasping, then we cannot achieve the enlightenment. Even the object is the virtues, the positive. Yeah. It's really interesting. Okay. Thank you. But one of the things sometimes I, I, I remind people, you know, is sometimes we feel like, you know, because it's hard not to have graspings at the moment until we have a realization of emptiness. So then what is the point of if the grasping is grasping? So if I'm grasping to the non-virtues or grasping to the virtues, still is a grasping so then what is the point of that so but even though there is a problem in terms of grasping but it's much more better to be grasping to the virtues than no grasping to the non-virtues uh, yeah of course <laughs> so but eventually we should also be able to let go of grasping even to the virtues as well so mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. yeah. but for for some individual at the very beginning maybe grasping to the virtue, give them really kind of energy to practice, you know. Uh, so that can be a kind of something helpful at the very beginning, but eventually you have to learn not to be grasping to even that one, you know, and so, yeah. Okay, then we can do the dedication then. So, yeah, due to the merits of this virtuous action, may I quickly attain the state of Guru Buddha and leave all living beings without accept into that enlightened state. May the Supreme Jewel Bodhisattva that is not arise and arise and grow, and may that which arise and not diminish but increase more. Kante rave polve singam de pendon deva mordu chumwe ne chere semo pinze da soe shabe sete pato tenjo chi. Tu tu chan shin jang gun jave den jong pe ve pun so to bo ze. Cho son go ele mo tu tu pa da so do che prendo sha pe sho. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining oh. today. Thank you, Geshe Swara. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night. We'll see you in two weeks. Okay, see you in two weeks. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.